Welcome back to another DL Boxing Podcast. I am your host, Coach D, along with my co-host, Bad Chaz, and neighborhood hero, Ryan Reels, where we talk about the sport you and I love, boxing. All right, guys. Well, how are you guys doing today, man? Good. I'm doing excellent, man. Good. Oh, man. We had uh, an abundance of boxing this past weekend, man. Like, too much, bro. Like, tell that, that Saudi Arabia card started at 10 a.m., man. I invited my brothers over. Like, hey, guys, we got to do something, you know. Uh, so we made freaking breakfast. Uh, my brother's wife hooked up some chilaquiles, refried oh, wow. beans. Thanks for the chilaquiles, by the oh, way. Oh, man. I'm awesome. glad you came over later awesome. to try them, man. Uh, dude, it's rough, man. It's rough because, you know, by the time the main event comes, man, then we had donuts, Scotty's donuts. <laughs> oh, shoot. Bro. Dude, by the time the, the Joshua Usyk, uh, I, I was lucky to have one eye half open, bro. I'm like, You're in a food coma? In a food coma, man. It was <laughs> ugly, man. How, how'd you guys, uh, how, how'd you guys' day go? Uh, you know what, dude? Saturday was busy, busy, busy. I uh, started off with the softball tournament. Um, How'd you do, man? You know what? Dude, I, 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 I we did all right. Played. I didn't know you played, Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. I, I, we did all right. You know, we lost our two, our first two games, which I'm a sore loser, but at the same time, I wanted to watch these fights. So, yeah. you know, shout out to my amazing wife. She was my chauffeur. Yeah. You know, yeah, after yeah, the yeah. game, she shot me straight over here. You're out throwing the game so you could be done faster. Yeah, or whatever. Uh, don't say that. You're going to be in trouble, but... <laughs> You know, no, at the same time, uh, I'm not mad, but she shot me straight over here after the game. That's cool, um, we were able to watch the, I want to say it was a co-main event. Yeah, the Hergovich, uh, Zhang. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then after that, we had another um, event to go to. That's crazy. Which man. we barely made that. And then I was just there on my iPad watching the uh, Joshua Ooh. Yusek fight. Devoted, and, man. Yeah. And man, uh, what a fight. But uh, what about you, Chess? How was your weekend? Oh, I was good, man. Just like Daniel was saying, there was just a lot of boxing. Started it early in the morning and went on all day. I tried to catch as much of it as I could without having to do my oh, homework no. later it's on. Rough, bro. It's, it's rough, rough dude. bro. It's rough, dude. It is. Have birthdays and you know <laughs> yeah, right. other things to attend too. Right. You know, I'm over those there. are good problems to have, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm glad we all had a great weekend, man. Uh, it was it was a blast. So so let's get started. Let's uh, preview the or review the fights that happened over this past weekend. Uh, first off, we'll start off with. The grandson of the greatest of all time. Muhammad Ali has a grandson who is fighting uh, nowadays. His name is Nico Ali Walsh. Uh, he fought Reyes Sanchez, and he scored a nice uh, second-round knockout, guys. Uh, yeah, how did you guys yeah. uh, see that fight? Or yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, it was a four-round fight. He took care of business in, uh, by the second round. Um, it, he, he started off looking pretty good. This was actually the second fight with Sanchez. I guess they fought You're in right. uh, yep. December 2021. And it was, point, uh, yeah. it was it was a majority decision for Ali. Right, right. I guess he wanted to run that back because yes. he kind of maybe yes. felt, yeah. yeah, he wanted a conclusive uh, mm -hmm. win. But you know what? He made he made a couple good uh, nice body shots in the mm. second round that just uh, took care of that liver. And, uh, you know, there's no Ooh. recovering from that. That guy just Absolutely not, fell man. to the ground. So Have you guys got hit in the liver before, bro? That, oh, that, that this hurts, guy hit man. me in the liver one time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. Get his bad chest. Yeah, again, this right? guy goes from zero shot. to 100 like that. Oh, man. You know what I mean? We've sparred a few times, and uh, I'm more of the boxer. He's more of the brawler. The brawler puncher. So, yeah. I mean, like, uh, yeah, those, yeah he's no got joke, me with the, the liver a couple Wait, times. Over here. Yeah, they're no joke, man. Yeah. Uh, you, got, you got, like, paws and shit. Like, holy crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so you're right. Yeah, Ali threw, actually threw two of them consecutively, right? Yeah. Uh, hooks to the body. The, the second one landed all right on the, you know, the liver shot. And uh, Sanchez could not get up. Like he threw a he threw a right, and then he, he came in with that left that uh, with his uh, number one hand right. hit the liver boom, and it yeah, was beautiful business. Actually, a nice win, nice yeah, win, yeah. nice yeah. Uh, come up for Ali. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, awesome guys. Uh, the main event on that ESPN card was the the return of Emmanuel El Vaquero Navarrete. He took on Eduardo Baez. Um, he scored. He ended up scoring the the six round knockout, but. For rounds one through five, he looked really, really rusty, guys. Yeah. What do you think, Ryan? You know what? I wasn't worried. You know, uh, Navarrete didn't didn't really um, show like he was concerned at all. I feel like he was poised the whole time. I feel like uh, Navarrete had a game plan, yeah. and that was to pretty much kind of figure out uh, Baez because he knew Baez was going to come out strong. Baez had yeah. a really good camp, by the way. Um, but Navarrete didn't really concern me too much. I know he starts off slow. Yeah, the commentators were thrashing yeah. and I, I don't Navarrete. get that. Yeah. But he he didn't right. have no worry, no concern on his face. Right. And those shots he was throwing when he was even when he was missing, 
they were precise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were coming out straight. Yeah. He had it in the same foot, angles. But, yeah, but, but still, but he was, he, yeah, he was going to yeah. catch him eventually. Oh, yeah, yeah. And beautiful body shot. Another yeah. body shot to the liver, right? Yeah. And body is where it's at, guys. Yeah. You know what? People don't go to the body as much as they should, but when they do, man, it's, it's right. paralyzing. Exactly. Yeah. You amateurs, work that body, guys. Exactly. It's, yeah, yeah. it's exactly. a good thing to start, you know, uh, uh, getting your experience going to the body. Yeah. That only makes your fight that much easier, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said, man. I, yeah, I believe, yeah, he... he even though the like I said, the commentators were thrashing him because he was you know missing a lot of shots, you know, kind of warming up to the task. But I think you're right. Rewatching it again, you know, he he never looked worried. He no, was just not like, at all. And it, it yeah. almost like he was trying to set up that left hand. It was just kind of getting his timing down yeah. and just yeah, you know, he he kind of has his own rhythm and and he was just kind of trying to get that together and it, and it slowly came together and worked for him. But yeah, yeah the commentators were almost kind of painting a picture that. Um, that you know he was uh, kind of going downhill or something, right, and like, uh, <laughs> bias was giving him a taste of something that he yeah, never had. Like before. it was his diet, and then it was his ring rust, yeah. and all these other things. But at the same time, I've watched Navarrete so, for so many, so many years already. It's yeah. I know his style, I know what he's about, and I wasn't concerned. I knew he was going to get the victory, and I don't know if he was setting up a trap or what he was doing, but um, when he landed. Guy, you can tell that mm. it was vicious, yeah. man, vicious. Did yeah. they mention something about him having, like, maybe trouble with weight? Do you think he's going to move up in weight in the future? I heard maybe? he lost 40 pounds to make the weight. 40, 40 to 50 pounds? Wow. Something Holy like that. Yeah. Cow. That's insane. Yeah, yeah that is uh, mm -hmm. not being disciplined, man, because... Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's, that's, he knows his body, though, So you too, think he'll stay at 126? You think he'll, he'll I think he up? can move up, definitely. And I, you know what, Shakur is like a, a, a Bud Crawford to me. Yeah, You know what I mean? Sure. And for him to fight Shakur... I mean, I say, say, I say, stay away from Shakur. Yeah, well, that, there's honestly, too much risk there. Yeah, uh, it's hard to train for Navarrete though. Like, how do you train for that? Yeah. You know what I mean? I just don't see uh, Navarrete touching Shakur. Yeah, he's a little tight. He's he's got uh, a good yeah, defense. As and much offense. as I, I hate saying that, man. Um, I think I think if he does go up to 130, a match with Valdez would be yeah, much a much more work. exciting fight and a much more winnable fight. I think. Yeah. Well, opinion. you know what? I mean, um, like you said, like you said, uh, Valdez. Yeah, he lost to to Shakur. But, I mean, how old is Navarrete? How, how old is he? Uh, I don't know how old he's like. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. So <laughs> in his 30s. time on his side, uh, he might right. want to go what for about the big him dogs. versus uh, Burchell? Mm. Ah, man. I Burchell's kind of kind of toast. Yeah, yeah. That's a good, I mean, if Burchell can, because Burchell ended up going up to 135 where he, he didn't belong, right? And he just got touched mm -hmm. too much by this guy. And I believe he ended up quitting in the stool, if I'm not mistaken. But if Burchell can get back down to 130, I, I see that as a good uh, as a good ground testing grounds for yeah, Navarrete yeah, yeah. to, to try 130. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, sh I know Shakur how good he is, but what I'm saying a style for what uh, uh, Navarrete shows, it's hard to train for something like that. I don't think Shakur's ever seen that. Yeah, and right. so I wouldn't mind if they fought, is what I'm saying. But yeah, I would give uh, Shakur's the A side definitely. Yeah, but at the yeah. same time, I give Navarrete a shot. Maybe give maybe give him a fight uh, to work his way up to that. Yeah, that definitely. I, I would. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't next, start him out there. Yeah, 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 I wouldn't start him there for sure. You're <laughs> right. Guy, you know. But um, yeah, I, I would definitely want him like maybe in the next year or so. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All right, guys. Uh, moving on to uh, the next fight. These are uh, fights that occurred on the zone. Uh, Next up, we have the fight between Callum Smith against Matthew Borderly. Callum Smith in his second fight at 175 pounds, light heavyweight, moving up from 168 where he lost his title to Canelo Alvarez. So this is his second fight at 175, and he couldn't look more impressive, guys. What do you guys think? I, I agree. What do you think, Ryan? You know what? Man, Callum Smith delivered that double hook, that double left hook. Psh, pow. Yeah. God, that was poetry in motion to me. Yeah. I, mean, I haven't seen a shot like that in I don't know how long. Yeah. But man, he connected. He had the perfect torque, the perfect precision, and lights out. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. That was just so beautiful. It was man. a barn burner, man. I was I was surprised that Borley uh, uh, wanted to engage so much with with the bigger Callum Smith. Yeah, uh, he made it. He 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 gave himself the best shot to win, mm -hmm. right? And that's what happens, right? If you you go in there to try to upset the favorite, you got to go in there and take it to him. But unfortunately, it, it looked like Borley like threw some punches. You know, he made some connections. He had his moments, but yeah, right, it right. just seemed like uh, Callum Smith. It didn't it didn't phase him. Like he, he it's almost like he conserved his energy yeah, better. He right, conserved right. his heart rate better. You know what I mean? And and it um, it showed. As the as the fight progressed, yeah, he must and, have had a really good camp because that comes with yeah. conditioning. You know, it yeah. does. It you does. know, like when you could take a shot to absorb yeah. the punches. You're right. You're yeah. conditioned. You know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. You came and in they, prepared. They, they both look real mm -hmm. conditioned. But you're right, man. That left hook, oh, oh. beautiful, man. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. He's got a nasty he, left hand. Yeah. So uh, I like Colin Smith at 175, man. Me too. Uh, he he's going to be a player uh, in that division where we have uh, uh, we have a Bivol, Zuro Ramirez. Uh, uh, who's that other guy? Uh, 
uh, the guy that fought on top rank against uh, uh, Smith. What's his name? Uh, oh, boy. Why oh, am I forgetting his name? Uh, Better Beef? Better Beef. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So those are the champions there. I think okay. he gives them a run for the money, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, yeah the, Callum Smith is a nice opponent for, for any of those champions to... To you know, give him a shot at it. It'll be exciting for see what Callum Smith could do at at 175 pounds for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, let's move on to the next one where uh, we had two undefeated heavyweights go at it with Philip Hergovic versus Zelezong. Guys, this was a back and forth <laughs> war between two giant heavyweights. Um, super you heavyweights, super <laughs> heavyweights, right? Uh, bad chance. How'd you see that, man? Oh, you know what, man? It was like they're they're big guys, you know. Like, and uh, those guys when they started it off, the first round, uh, uh, Zhang, he uh, he uh, it, he looked like he had knocked him down. But if you pay more attention to it, it's almost like he uh, whenever he made contact with them, it's almost like it was a pull down. But yeah, like pull. they counted it as a knockdown. Yeah, so he scored that early knockdown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I mean, uh, it was it was kind of back and forth. It looked like you know like. Um, Zhang, you know, he kind of lost some of his energy, you know, like I think after the seventh or eighth round. Um, and then it looked like the 12th round, it looked like uh, Hergovic just kind of uh, stepped it up a notch, you know. And yeah, he kind it of, looked like he, he wanted he made, it more at the He convinced end. people, you know, that, that it was his fight. Yeah, like that fight was was rough to watch only because yeah. they looked like they were both hurt yeah. like throughout the whole fight. Like like either one just needed one shot to finish the other. <laughs> yeah, and like yeah. neither one of them wanted to throw that shot or yeah. absorb this shot. So it almost looked like Zhang was like uh, looking for just that one punch that was gonna uh, like right, uh, seal out, the deal. Put the lights out, yeah. And I mean, the other guy, you know, he was just kind of, uh, you know, he was kind of more boxing, throwing combinations. And then, I mean, uh, like as the fight progressed, you see yeah. like Zhang kind yeah. of stewed a little more combos and kind of redeeming himself. But then, yeah, it was just like, you yeah, know, neither, one round from the next, it was like, they had energy and then the, the next right. one they were like toast. Like they took off like some to, rounds yeah. or something. Yeah, 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 neither could pull the finishing move on each other. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But honestly, I think Zhang had him hurt to where like uh, the other guy got saved by the bell a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah you, know, you had him so posing and kind of looking turning around. Weird, yeah, and just some weird like he wanted out a couple of times. Right, and then he comes back the next round and just delivers some brutal shots. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah, that was a weird fight to score. And honestly, I, I think uh, Zhang won that fight. I, I, you know what? I, I kind of agree with you. Or it, I, I wouldn't be mad with the draw, but yeah. Zhang won that. Fight. I agree with you. You know, that's kind of a hard one to judge. Like mm -hmm. you'd almost have to watch it a, two or three times. You know, like to really dissect yeah, it to yeah, get exactly, an yeah. overall opinion because I, I don't think that they scored it right, you know? And I, I feel kind of bad for Zhang, you know? He kind of uh, looked like he was disappointed in it too. Yeah, and what, what is he, 39 years old? Yeah, 39, 39 years old. And the other guy's yeah. 30. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. hats off to Zhang. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. for sure. Right, and, and, and credit Hergovic too. Uh, he, he that, like you said, the last round, he it looked like he wanted it more. And that's mm -hmm. what I think, you know, obviously won him the fight. That last round, you know, he had, he had a Zhang hurt and kind of like, you know, at the end of the round, Zhang was exhausted. Uh, Hergovic, you know, said he was for his, for his father, right, who passed away two months prior. So oh, okay. he had that major motivation, man. So I think that helped him in times where yeah. he wanted to quit, right? Yeah. Where it looked like he wanted to quit. Yeah. So what about Zhang drinking five gallons of water a day? Oh, man. Gosh, that guy's man. Crazy. Like uh, five gallons of water. <laughs> We're in a drought over here in California, you know. <laughs> right. Don't be trying to train yeah, over here. Guy, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're yeah, going to issue that guy a fine if he yeah, gets yeah, out yeah, here right? in California. Yeah. Yeah. Newsom's going to penalize him. <laughs> that boy was sweating so much. The damn ring was making. Making, you know, slip. Yeah, you're right. Ring. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I that too. yeah, yeah. But good fight, man. Um, I think. What do you think, Horkovich? Well, actually, I think there's a rematch is in place, right? More than anything, yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Yeah, I don't see. I would, I would I watch it. I wouldn't mind sure. seeing that. Right, like I don't see like, oh, he should fight this guy now. No, yeah. I think nah, they should let's, just, they should just run it back. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. if it's in the clause, yeah. you know, the the contract that they made. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. So that's where they should go back at each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Excellent, guys. All right, guys, and now we talk about. The main event, <laughs> it was a rematch between unified champion Alexander Usyk versus AJ Anthony Joshua. Guys, it was repeat. Uh, Bad Chaz had the right prediction. Good job, dude. Right? Oh, what did you predict man. Cheers, again? Cheers, bro. Uh, Cheers. I, you know what, man? I kind of just went out on a limb, and I was like, oh, Cheers, I think I think Usyk has a, I think Usyk has it by decision, but yeah, yeah. You know, and, and watching that fight. You know, I just kind of thought, you know, watching previous fights with uh, Anthony Joshua, you know, sometimes he, he's hesitant to engage. But, you know, I was being optimistic about it, you know, and since he, he went with Robert Garcia to kind of see, you know, if he's going to change his uh, technique. and Which he did. And he did. And, uh, you know, he showed that in the first maybe, what, two or three rounds. You know, he was kind of dropping levels. He was... He was coming forward, you know, he he was slipping, he was moving. Yeah, he looked nice. That line. He looked and nice. it's almost like he had Usyk kind of like confused, mm -hmm. like, oh, this is a Second different, guessing, this is right. a different, yep. this is a, a different, different guy Joshua, today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
you know, I was just kind of remaining watching it. And then, but you know, it just seemed like uh, Usyk stuck to his game plan and he didn't break. And then slowly Joshua kind of kind of broke. Perfect. Yep. And then, you know, he, he kind of uh, started uh, opening up, he kind of breaking them down and Usyk just kind of kept stepping to the side, throwing some beautiful, making angles and making oh, beautiful, beautiful shots. Combinations. Yeah. And just, and just ultimately out pointing him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Usyk had the two, three, four that were landing, whereas uh, Joshua could maybe land one or two at one time, but very sparingly, right? Yeah. Um, we we go uh, so like you said, perfect. You per- described it perfectly. Where Joshua was giving a new look to to Usyk, and Usyk was like, yeah. "Okay, hold on, I gotta." You yeah. know, this is a little tougher. But as you said, as the rounds uh, wore down, uh, uh, Usyk started to touch him more. He did with his, with his angles and his movement to yeah. the right, mm-hmm. uh, turning Joshua. Um, Joshua's uh, uh, highlights, if you will, in the eighth round, he started hitting that body. And then that, that big ninth round, what happened there, Ryan? You know what? I just was super impressed, man. I was on the edge of my seat when I seen that ninth round and just went to the body like what RB, RGB right, does. Right, right. Yeah. And um, you know what? He hurt Usyk. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh my Usyk God. Usyk was like, kind of like on wobbly legs, but at the same time, um, Joshua played it smart to where he went up top too. Yeah. But man, I thought he had him coming into the tenth round, and the tenth round was just Ooh, totally the, the yeah, opposite. Right? But he, did you notice Usyk kind of kept off the ropes? You know, like he didn't allow Joshua to cut him off to get like uh, to do that body work. Right. He, he did the major work in the yeah. center of the ring. Right. Yeah. Good point. You're good right. Point. As soon as they got to the center of the ring, that's where Usyk just flourished. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and Joshua should have just kept pressuring, pressuring, and went to the body. But I mean, Usyk, I give my all my respect to Usyk yeah, because right, he's a right. warrior, like yeah. you said in the last podcast. He wanted it more. He dug deep and he got the victory. Yeah, and, yeah he had this country I, on I his shoulders. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so that beautiful ninth round by Joshua, like mm-hmm. you said, oh my god, he's he's getting to him. He might be able to pull this off. Yeah. And then, like you said, the tenth round, Usyk comes right back, mm-hmm. dominates the round, just tagging Joshua left, right, you know, turning him. Like, oh my god, like. This is happening, man. Like, yeah. like, wow. And so from the 10th, 11th, 12th championship rounds is when Usyk turned up the heat and, and outpointed, yeah. outclassed uh, Anthony Joshua once again, guys. There, uh, was a, there was a couple moments, though, where it looked like Joshua had uh, had phased him, you know what I mean? Where it looked yeah. like he had hurt him. But sure, uh, sure, I yeah. think either he was saved by the bell or he was able to kind of uh, uh, lock lock onto him and kind of uh, uh Right, regain himself him. for a little yeah. bit, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, but you credit Usyk for his defensive uh, proud, proudness mm-hmm. as well. He he was able to, you know, uh, uh, not take those punches yeah. flush. He was catching them. And catching them on the yeah. gloves. Uh, or if not, you know, I'm pretty sure Joshua would have heard of him and dropped mm-hmm. them oh, yeah. if, if they were clean otherwise. Yeah. And I even noticed, too, like, um, Usyk started uh, kind of praying when he was in the corner. I love it, yeah. And it's good, like, man. Man, dude, like yeah. this guy really like wanted it. Yeah. This guy yeah. dug deep where where Joshua didn't want to go. Usyk yeah. went. Yes, and um, that's just beautiful to see, yeah. man. Like it gives me it gave me chills watching dude, that fight. Yeah. Yeah. Usyk said, "I don't fight for money. I fight for glory." Ooh, and I was just did. like, "Wow, oh, like, yeah. you yeah. know, there's not too many people that uh, will come out and say stuff like that that mm-hmm. are like right, it, right. It's, it's to the core. You know what I mean? Glory like, for his people, his country, man. You know, his country, what they're going through right yeah. now. You see this tough guy, man, all the way up through camp. Uh, throughout the fight, you know, but then he he gets a victory like that, and he just breaks down in these in these tears, and it's yeah. just like, yeah. wow, what a beautiful yeah, moment. Joshua in boxing. Just, Joshua was just up against it. it yeah. It's, yeah, it was almost I hate to say it, an impossible task. If you yeah. there is such a thing as an impossible task, um, yeah. But nicely described, guys. Uh, the scoring, guys, uh, split decision. Yeah, get out of here, man. Yeah, most, that was a little far fetched. Yeah, I think Joshua won four rounds, which was. Uh, two rounds better than the yeah. first time. Yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but one judge actually scored it seven rounds to five for Joshua, yeah. which is kind of a disgrace, man. I mean, that's 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 harsh. I mean, that's that's hard to digest, and yeah. and, and and like we don't need judges like that in the sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, especially when there's something that's clear, you know, Absolutely. as a clear victory for Usyk as that was. Uh, yeah. So uh, then we had a little a little uh, incident with Joshua in the aftermath of the fight. He had a little episode where he stormed out of the ring and then he came back into the ring and kind of kind of was kind of held back by some of yeah. these guys. I think this loss really got to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, re- he really wanted to win, guys. Yeah, um, no, I agree. What do you guys think about his behavior afterwards? And then, and then he did this little speech, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think, um, right? Or, you know, you know what? I, I, I mean, uh, it is what it is. Like, uh, I, yeah. have, I, I don't hold it against him for any of that. Like. Um, I think that, you know, he, he's put so much work into oh, it, yeah, yeah. um, you know, and he's the kind of fighter, you know, where he comes back to reclaim his belts and, uh, you know, I respect that. 
And I mean, he, I think it was good to, for him to just let it out on the line and leave it there in the ring. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think it's good that he didn't take it into the locker room or take it home with them. Like, um, get that off your chest. You know what I mean? Like, uh, if that's what it takes, like, I, I definitely don't want to see him kind of, uh, going, you know, the down like a bad road or something or, or hearing, you know, that he's not doing well. Like, I right. think that, you know, that's kind of the, the beginning of the process. You know what I mean? Um, you got to understand this guy, you know, he lost a lot, man. And it means yeah. so much. To and him. he lost to the best of the best. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, right, Usyk has nearly 400 amateur fights. Mm-hmm. He's seen all styles. Uh, this guy's a real deal. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's, it's it's unfortunate for Joshua that, that Usyk decided yeah. to move up yeah. to the heavyweight division and, and seek Joshua out. I remember saying, I, "I'm coming for you, Anthony." And man, did he yeah. come for him? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah and so, I agree with you, dude. That's just raw emotion. You know what I mean? And you got to let it out somehow. Yeah. You're done with the fight. I yeah. mean, you yeah. know, sometimes it's like an you emotional just gotta let poison. Up. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And he trained. He 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 got a new trainer. He tried things different. Yeah, you know what right, I mean? Right. But Usyk was just on another level, man. Yeah. And um, my hats off to Usyk because yeah. I, I really enjoyed that fight. I'm so like proud of how he performed. And I was going for Joshua. You guys all yeah. know that. But at mm. the same time, like, I want to see uh, Usyk Fury now. Right. Yeah, so, yeah right. that's true. We'll yeah. see so if before, that happens. Yeah, before we, we talk about what's next for Usyk, which we hinted Fury, I think Joshua, people are saying, oh, that's it for him. I don't think so, man. I don't think so either. I, oh. think, I think he's actually a, possibly be even a better fighter now that he's gone 24 rounds with Usyk. He's gotten that uh, that that experience under his belt. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he he could still rebound and, and challenge for for about later down the road. I think he should he should you know take some some take some fight actually come back soon this year maybe a November or December bout get yeah. his confidence back up uh have some more fights in between until he gets a shot at either uh Fury or or whoever's or there Wilder. at the end or Wilder right mm-hmm. yeah but but hey there's no shame in you like i said losing to Usyk twice yeah Mike Tyson couldn't beat Holyfield he tried to he fought him twice That's, yeah you're right uh Mosley lost to Vernon Forrest twice. Mm-hmm. Vernon Forrest lost to Mayorga twice. So there's just guys that you can't beat, right? Does that yeah. mean you're a bad fighter? No, not yeah, at absolutely all. Absolutely not. So no. Joshua ca- uh, has nothing to be ashamed of. He should yeah. hold his head up high, and he's gonna be he's gonna be uh, dangerous still for a yeah, lot of these heavyweights. So Usyk needed a dancing partner, and Joshua was it. Yeah. Yeah, so right. I, yeah, it wouldn't right. have been done without him. Exactly. You know exactly. What I mean? He's part right. of the history. You know, with, mm-hmm. with the way, however you put it. Yeah. So now Usyk uh, adds the Ring Magazine title to his other three heavyweight titles that he has now. Uh, like we said, though, we the only match that matters now and the only match that Usyk wants is the one with Tyson Fury. Mm-hmm. Uh, Usyk is a, a free promotional fighter, uh, or he, he doesn't have any. So you know, they can make that. So they, they should yeah. make that fight yeah. uh, rather easily for with Fury. Although Fury's yeah. demanding a lot of money or, or you know <laughs> saying this and that. Where does that uh, fight take place though? Maybe Saudi Arabia. Where did they come to? Where did they come to? Saudi Arabia, um, and I'm not giving any like um, Joshua an easy way out, but that altitude is super high. Exactly, temperature too, and they fight outside. So I mean, um, maybe a level playing field. I don't know. Yeah, Yeah. and those guys went 12 rounds. But, yeah, they but do they do they have it at Saudi Arabia because of the money that, that yeah, they're absolutely. able to? Well, that's that's why they go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's bringing big money. They don't mm-hmm. care about the temperature or the adjustment <laughs> that the, the boxers have to yeah. make. Right. Yeah. Because you know, if yeah. you're gonna if you're gonna do a camp, might as well do the whole camp there. Right. Right. Yeah. If that's you where the fight's I mean? gonna be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I agree. Um, Usyk have a chance to beat Fury if they do make Ooh, that fight. Right. I, you know, that's something I'm not gonna make a decision on or try to make a prediction. Um. That that's just too hard to call. You know right. what I mean? Well, once it's I know. closer, once it's closer to the fight, right? Um, you start giving. The yeah, guy I'll start giving think. my predictions. But again, you guys all know I'm biased. Yeah, uh, Fury is my guy. Oh, yeah. You know, I met Fury again. Uh, you know, like I photobombed this guy when he wanted to take a picture with Fury. Just that's how much I like the guy. Mm. But I see Fury. Really, man. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Fury and know. Music, they both have a lot of grit. I've seen Fury mm-hmm. on the ground before from uh, Wilder. I've never seen yeah. Usyk on the ground. Cunningham dropped Fury. You know what I mean? Smaller so, guy, smaller guy. I don't know. I think it all depends on, you know, how they take care of their body up to the point of the fight. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Like, if Fury doesn't take him seriously, that's that's part partly yeah. where Usyk will win if Fury doesn't take it seriously. But I don't think Fury would be that unwise to not take Usyk yeah. seriously. I so. mean, who knows? Usyk could be over there partying it up right now. Nah. Uh, nah. Fury could be over there getting ready. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> I think it might be reversed. Reverse. <laughs> right, I know, right. right. But yeah, but Fury is a whole different animal uh, to Anthony Joshua because the, the guy can box. He can move for a 6'9". Uh, there's a reason why he's undefeated and, and you know, and uh, 
heralded the soap high even even throughout history like oh he would be a favorite with you know against all these older you know all time yeah. greats uh, because the man could box he's huge and it would probably be an uphill battle for Usyk yeah in my opinion but. We'll see once we cross that bridge. Yeah. See how we feel then. Yeah. So absolutely, congratulations to Usyk. Brilliant win. Yeah. For Good sure. Job, congratulations, man. Absolutely. Yeah. The last fight we will cover for this weekend was on Showtime, where uh, Omar Figueroa Jr. met Sergey Lipinets in a 140-pound uh, uh, bout. I feel bad for Omar Figueroa. He was supposed to fight um, Adrian Broner. Mm -hmm. Broner uh, pulled out of the fight, uh, citing mental illness. And so in came Sergey Libnets, um, and boy, did he put a pounding on Figueroa. Yeah. Uh, how do you see that, Ryan? God, man, it was just hard to watch. It was, it was. You man. know what I mean? Uh, Omar, that's not the same fighter that I've seen, you know what I mean? And he's, he's came off uh, a beat down to Ugas, and mm. I'm thinking that might have changed his whole career because oh, course, a lot of times course. when you get beat down like that, you don't ever really recover from that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and Libnets, um He's just a strong, hungry, uh, hungry fighter. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, he just took everything Omar Figueroa had to dish at him. Right. Yeah. From the get go, right? Just from the get go. Boom, boom. Just mm -hmm. they clash, and all of a sudden you, you it saw It started one. off. It started off first round was banging. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you, but right away you saw like, oh, one's a little yeah. bit uh, significantly stronger than the other as far as yeah. the punches and yeah. how they looked. You know, the it seemed like, uh, about, seemed like Limpinets was sitting down more in his punches. Oh, yeah. 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 And his legs just under underneath them looked stronger. Uh, Figueroa right. did. And I mean, even too, when, when uh, Figueroa like would hit him with a good shot, it was just like he walked right through it. Yeah. yeah and it delivered yeah. like two or three yeah. of his own. Right. You know? Just pounding, pounding mm -hmm. shots. I'm surprised they let it Figueroa. go to the ninth round. Yeah. So, so Figueroa took eight rounds of, you know, punishment from Limpinets. After the eighth round, the the Omar Figueroa uh, corner stops yeah. the fight. Mm -hmm. uh, good thing that they did. Yes, uh, yeah. Figueroa. I, I remember post fight, he was telling his corner man, "I did everything right this camp, mm -hmm. but my body's just not. It's just not a uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, responding to, yeah. to what I wanted to do." And it, mm -hmm. it was a sad. It was a sad moment, man. So Omar Figueroa retired after the fight. Um, that, that he called it quits after that. Uh, so Lipinet scores a, a TKO win over, yeah. over on a fill in, on a fill in, on a fill yeah, in. And yeah. he was supposed to fight, um, I want to say on the undercard of that. Yeah, and he was uh, ready. I believe he was the so he was trained, he was yeah. already conditioned. Yeah. And, um, you know what? He has a great gym, uh, Fortune gym, For, uh, 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 Lipinets? Justin Fortune, yeah. Lipinets? yes, that's his, that's his head coach. Uh huh, and, and actually, that's here I, in California. Yeah, it's actually, I want to say like uh, Hollywood, Beverly Hills. Actually, I, I went there and I met Justin Fortune. Oh, yeah. Nice, and dude. Um, super cool guy, man. Like uh, as soon as I walked in, you know, I seen him at the cashier stand or whatever. And I asked him, hey, can I buy a hat or anything? Oh, and, yeah. I remember that. You sent yeah, me a picture yeah, of it. Yeah, I did. And so he's like, you know what? I, I don't have any hats. But as soon as they do, he got my information. As soon as I do, I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll get you a hat yeah. free of charge. So nice, um, nice. I asked, you know, we started talking boxing. I guess he used to train Jose Ramirez. He used to be a fan. I didn't know that, Freddie bro. Roach I didn't know back that. In the day. Yeah, I just remember seeing Justin Fortune in, in the Pacquiao camp. Yes, yes, he was yeah. with Freddie Roach, and obviously right, right. Pacquiao was with Freddie I, Roach. That's where I recognize him. So as we got to talking, he just started walking me around and showing me his gym, and it reminds me of like a gym back in the like the sixties yeah. or seventies, nice. and just small, but like yeah. everything is just like. Um, it's old just school. is old school. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he even had like a little studio on his roof where they did some type of like uh, strength and conditioning and stuff. But Justin Fortune, super cool guy. Um, you know, I want to go back to his gym again and possibly maybe we can all go and make yeah, a train. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be, that'd be dope, man. But um, super cool guy. I didn't see Lempinitz, but I did see uh, Frank Carrillo. Um, as soon as, uh, you know, we were going upstairs, I got a tap on my back. And it was Frank Gorillo. Frank Gorillo is a, people that don't know, that's a, he's an actor, right? You know what? I, that was the first time yeah, I heard but, of him. But he, but yeah, he I guess he's boxing. like an action hero yeah, yeah. or something. Oh, yeah. okay. He's an actor. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So um, as I was talking to Justin Fortune, you know, he's in there and tapping me on the back. And again, I didn't really know who he was at the time, <laughs> right, but right. he's chiming in on the conversation. All right. Huh? So just super cool gym, you yeah. know, like there's pretty prestigious people in there and it's just... It's just run like a normal gym. Yeah. So it's a super, like, boxing just reminds me of how humble. Yeah. You know, right, it right. Is. Yeah. But super cool experience. I'm glad for Limpinets, and I hope to see him in there soon. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah. Cool, man. Thanks for sharing. That's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. that was a good experience that's for you, man. Yeah, it was. Super experience. Cool. All right, guys. Well, it's fight week. 
And today we're going to preview the fights on ESPN, uh, August 27th, uh, where we ha will have the main event, Jose Pedraza versus Richard Comey in 10 rounds of action in the 140-pound division. But we, before we get to that main event, guys, let's talk about who's on the undercard, which is the heavyweight prospect, Jared Anderson, 11-0, 11 KOs, stands six foot four, 22 years young, 22 years young, yeah, 22. So this guy, this guy looks like to be the next yeah. real deal uh, American yeah. heavyweight, right? Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see him, you know, how he, how he progresses, you know what I mean? Right, right. Um, he's still young. He's only 22 years old. Uh, he's with top rank. Yeah. So I know they're going to kind of like keep him in house yeah. for as long as they can. They're going to groom him and yep. slowly build mm -hmm. him up. But man, he has power. Yeah. You know, he has charisma. He right. has everything. everything. He's he athletic. Everything. I think he can, he can uh, uh, do orthodox or southpaw, right? Can he? Yeah. He has power in both hands. Yeah, he does that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, he reminds me of a young uh, Rick Bow. Some yeah. Okay, yeah, he look, kind of looks like that. Is that why? Is that why? Yeah, so, hey, yeah. Riddick Bowe, when he was young, you know, that guy was uh -huh. the bad From, from what dude. the information I've gathered, the guy that he's fighting, Ruff Cannon, I guess he, that he's only has fights in Europe, and he hasn't fought in since, like, 2019, so I think it's going to be easy work for him. He's going to go in there and he's Right, gonna, so, yeah. yeah, so his opponent is uh, John Ruff Cannon. Uh, it's going to be a 10-rounder against Jared Anderson, and so you're, you're picking Jared Anderson to... The, yeah, yeah easy, same easy work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's gonna be fun to watch it up. You know, it's a ten it's rounder. Always, it's a ten rounder. Okay, yes. I'm, so I'm thinking like yeah. fifth, sixth round too. Uh, 140 pounds. Uh, no, 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 no. Once that's Pedraza. Yeah, oh, Pedraza. excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Which brings us to the 140 pound matchup: mm -hmm. uh, Jose Pedraza versus Richard Comey. Both of them yeah. coming off of losses. They are. Uh, it's a to me, it's like a crossroad fight. Yeah, yeah. Or a crossroad fight mm -hmm. for each uh, for Pedraza and Comey. Um, both of them fought Lomachenko, right? Both of them fought Lomachenko. Uh, Pedraza, uh, Pedraza, Pedraza fought Tank, and I think yeah, he did. He, uh, did. he fought Tank. He went the distance. Tommy fought uh, uh, Jose Ramirez. Uh, no, Pedraza did. Yeah, that's, Pedraza one, did. that's the one we went to. Remember? Oh, okay. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We went to in Fresno, California. Pedraza versus Jose Ramirez. But here they are facing each other. Pedraza versus Comey. Uh, Comey coming off a big loss against Lomachenko. Uh, Pedraza coming off the loss against uh, Jose Ramirez. Right? I think that's yeah. the last fight. Mm -hmm. And so who who has the upper hand, hand here, guys? I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I that's say gonna Pedraza. Be um, it's going to be hard to knock Comey out because, I mean, Lomachenko couldn't do it. Right. And right. Tiafimo just caught him with that beautiful, beautiful big shot, run. just yeah. timed it perfect. But Comey, man, he has a jaw. He just, yeah. he's just relentless. But Pedraza, I think, just can outbox him. The, the, the boxing ability? Yeah, think just the boxing be ability. Because he did him. really good against Jose Ramirez. Um, just maybe a couple of rounds, just, you know, that yeah, was the difference. Was... But I, I pick Jose Pedraza by... Uh, good pick. By... Um, I'm sorry, but you by unanimous decision. Unanimous decision. Oh, okay. Yeah, you or maybe what? split decision. I'm not sure yet. So I'm gonna go with Comey, man. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Comey. Okay. Uh, just I don't know. For some reason, he seems like the underdog in this fight. He so he's uh, the B side. Yeah, they're both B sides, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, kind of what I was wondering. So, like, who's the A side? Uh, yeah. So um, I'm gonna go with Comey. Uh, split decision. Shocks. Shocks. Pedraza. Okay. Where's this fight taking place? Uh, I'm not sure, man. I'm not okay. sure where it's taking place. Uh, who's your pick, Bad Chaz? You know what? I'll go with Pedraza. Pedraza, I okay. I, I think yeah. he might just be a little, just a little fresher, more a little fresher. Bit fresher yeah. yeah, cool. So that's this Saturday, uh, August 27th, I want to say, uh, via ESPN. All right, guys. So that rounds up uh, the action coming up. Uh, our next segment, guys, is a brand new segment. We are calling Bambi Legs, man. <laughs> so what that is, guys, Bambi Legs is uh, we're going to re remind you, the fans, of some of the best chicken dances performed in the ring. Now, what, what I mean by that, guys, is, uh, uh, you know, when, when, when an opponent gets hit, you know, by a shot that they don't see or just a powerful shot, you know, their body reacts yeah. in yeah, a way yeah, they yeah, can't yeah, yeah. control. When the, right? when the legs are ready to leave the fight, but the rest <laughs> of you wants to stay there. Exactly right. <laughs> so they, they do something uh, sporadic and, and, you know, unfortunately, sometimes humorous. Yeah. Um, yeah so that's what we're going to we're going to uh, tell you guys, you know, our favorite uh, Bambi leg fights. And, you know, describe them a little bit for you guys. And maybe um, you guys can let us know what your guys' favorite chicken leg fights are. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Comment down below what your favorite let us Bambi know. leg. We'd like to see it. Yeah. yeah. I want to see it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Comment down below your favorite Bambi leg uh, fight. Um, all right, guys. So, Bad Chaz, uh, give us your example. What's one of your favorite uh, Bambi leg Oh, uh, You know what? I bouts. really en I enjoyed the uh, the Canelo versus Trout fight. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. You know, they were going at it, and Canelo landed a really powerful right hand, and Trout just... 
his legs, they just look like they wanted to do their own thing. It almost looked like, you know, whenever you see a, a baby horse trying to learn how to walk, it's like, oh, it's stumbling around out there. <laughs> yeah, it's got right? these legs that are wanting to do its own thing. And that thing's just confused. You know, he kind of looked like that. And that's what it reminded oh, me Oh, man. Yeah. But no. you know what? No discredit to him. You know, I respect anybody that gets in the ring, you know, yeah, and I, course, I hope he course. recovered and he's okay. But yeah. I thought it was, it's kind of funny yeah. in that moment. It, it, it just, he just lost control yeah. of, the, of his limbs, his, yeah. his, his lower limbs. And, and mm-hmm. yeah, that was... That was a nice shot by Canelo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, neighborhood hero Ryan Rios. What is your bad? You don't have to go about? with uh, Zab Judah Ooh. versus Costa Zoo. Oh, yeah. And man, Classic. I was so looking for the, forward to this fight Classic because fight. Uh, Zab Judah was undefeated and Costa Zoo was just coming out like this, like baby Mike Tyson. You yeah. know, he just had this power that was just crazy. So I want to say it was like the end of the second round. Um, yeah. Costa Zoo caught him with this, like, just looping right hand, but. Man, put him down. Thunderous. Boom. But what was crazy is that Judah got up as fast as he went down. <laughs> but when right. he got up, like his legs just weren't there. You know what I mean? Like it looked like his legs wanted to take him out of the ring and take him back to the locker room or something. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was yeah. Brutal. brutal. His legs just brutal. totally yeah. betrayed him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you guys will see it, but yeah, yeah it was bad. But again, I love Zab Judah. No disrespect. Um, he's one of the guys I haven't met that, that I definitely want to meet because yeah. he's just an overall just yeah. class act. Cool dude. Yeah. Cool dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, humble warrior. Absolutely. Heck yeah, man. Speaking of uh, Mike Tyson, uh, I'm going to go with Mike Tyson versus Trevor Burbick. Uh, Mike Tyson, uh, he was trying to become the youngest heavyweight champion of all time. So he he faced Trevor Burbick. Uh, he catches Trevor Burbick with a fast left hook right on the temple. And with that single shot, he scores three knockdowns, brothers. Three knockdowns. Uh, Burbick was just... Uh, you know, he was just stumbling all over the ground, man. Like he was stumbling over his kids' toys in the dark. You know, after a night out drinking. Yo, man, oh, I know man. That he was all over the place. Yeah. Right? He was all over the place, man. Uh, yeah, I hope he, you know, he recovered after that fight. But yeah, he was just, uh, you know, he was just wiping the floor with, uh, you know, cleaning the ring yeah. off of that single <laughs> shot, man. Damn. Yeah. And then my second Bambi Lake fight is uh, Callum Smith. He fought Lennon Castillo. This was his first fight at 175 pounds, where he looked strong, man, strong. Ooh, that boy landed, uh, 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 Callum Smith landed a hard right hand, dropped Castillo in a flash. Castillo ends up shaking uh, uncontrollably, uncontrollably on the ground, man. It just reminded me of, uh, of me shaking in my bed after seeing uh, Nightmare, on El- Nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> man, as a six-year-old. Oh, I was scared, bro, in the bed. Yeah, it was just it was just Dang, crazy, yeah. brother. It was just crazy. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, those are our Bambi leg moments uh, yeah. for this for this episode. Hope you guys like them. Hope you guys yeah. like them. Uh, man, yeah. Um, all right, guys. Well, that concludes our episode. Like I said, we want, we want to say a shout out to all the fighters that get in the ring. Uh, you know, that is the chamber of truth. That, that square circle is no joke. And we do respect all fighters, uh, you know, regardless of, you know, us joking with this Bambi Lake stuff. Um, all right, guys. With that said, I am Coach D. This is Bad Chaz, neighborhood hero Ryan Reels, and we're out. <laughs>